This is a grass hay. Uh, this is a straw. And this is lucerne. Lucerne is a legume, so it's high nitrogen. And we can use it to heat up the pile. We can, when we use lucerne, we can reduce the amount of manure and we can reduce the amount of ingredients that are activators like blood and bone meal because lucerne is an activator. It will heat up the pile. Straw is a unique product and it's be called straw because it's actually hollow in the centers. One of the things about straw is very high in carbon and the fungi can get in the middle of the straw and germinate and then pop through. This is a hay and it's thought of as a green material where straw is thought of as a high carbon material. The difference is, or one of the differences is, that with hay, the hay is harvested green and it has not formed and dropped its seed, which means it's full of sugars. Okay. Whereas with the straw, it's high carbon and it's a high carbon material because all the sugars have been used up in making the production of the seed. So it's formed and dropped its seed or the seed has been harvested and in this case it would probably have been harvested. We're going to use four measures of high carbon material which is the straw and the wood chips, three measures of the green material and two measures of manures or high nitrogen material. We're going to make a wire mesh um, we put the pitchfork into this end here to keep it from springing back and uh, hitting us in the face. So we can roll this out neatly. It's about a six meter length. I'm working here with Kane today. He's uh, learning compost as a specialty. It's about six meters long and it's going to create a circle for us to build the compost up. We want this to hold about three or four cubic meters. Probably Just about use simple clips buy at the local farm supply and when we're ready to turn this compost pile we just unclip the wire take it off and move it over and then fill the compost okay we're using the wheelbarrow for our measuring scoop we're going to put four high carbon measures in which is four wheelbarrow pulls that's how we're going to start we got a light drizzle so i have my favorite umbrella the old lacubra and uh away we go we're going to take this uh high carbon material and realize that a lot of material isn't just high carbon because there's bark in this and there's ground up leaves in this. So there's sugars, proteins, high carbohydrates and high carbon material in this but it's classified as a high carbon material because these woody chips are going to be high in lignin and take a while to break down and that's our carbon source. We're going to measure this in the wheelbarrow as well to stay consistent and it should take about a half a bale with maybe a little bit less than a half a bale. We're going to call that a load, okay? Um, and we'll chuck that on and we'll fluff it up. Once we have this on, we want to mist it down. Once you see water running out in any place, stop watering and just let it soak in. On every carbon layer, we're going to add some rock dust. This is a all rock product and some calcium carbonate or basic agricultural line. Okay. And this is mostly to ensure diversity of materials promotes diversity of microbes. We're adding lots of mineral. We're adding minerals as rock dust. We're adding minerals as kelp. We're adding calcium as calcium carbonate. And we don't have to worry about huge quantities of this. We're just adding the essential element for the essential mineral diversity. I think kelp is a terrific mineral source. It also has plant growth stimulants and it also is a crop protector. It helps the plants have a very robust immune system. We'll let them water it down for a minute and then we'll add the rest of this and one bale of hay will equal about three measures of green material. And then we're going to add another few liters of minerals onto this layer. Remember that once a microbe takes up nutrient and then that microbe is eaten by other microbe, well, once the, the mineral becomes life, it's available to life. So once the mineral is taken up by a microbe, it's then plant available nutrient or available to support the life of another microbe. A very robust compost at the end of it because okay. it's highly mineralized compost and those minerals are taken up by the biology. And once those minerals are taken up by the microbes, they're plant available nutrient. So remember, when you kill microbes in your system using chemicals, 
you're actually releasing a lot of plant available nutrient from the death of those microbes. You, unfortunately, you're also destroying your soil diversity, complexity, and soil structure. So we want uh, about three wheelbarrowfuls of, of uh, green material, and we're using hay for our green material in this. So it's considered green. It has not made and dropped its seeds, so it's high in sugars. Oh, nice. Okay, we're using molasses to activate the green material and the brown material underneath. Molasses We've on. Go ahead and pour the molasses on and spread it out as evenly as you can. It's actually better to put it out in a sprinkler can. Brown bone meal that's burned at high temperature with uh, rice husk to make a soluble fine powder product that is soluble calcium, soluble potassium, soluble phosphate, yeah, and, and silicon? potassium silicate. Potassium okay. silicate. And potassium silicate helps strengthen the cell walls of plants and helps them resist disease and insect attack. This is what the bone looks like after it's burned and crushed. Burning bone makes it brittle, so it's very easy to crush with your feet or drive over with a car or put through a hammer mill. So we're going to add a bit of the potassium, the silica, the calcium, and the phosphate as bone, the burn bone and rice husk. And we're going to add some burnt bone to see if it decomposes in the thermal process of decomposition. Uh, we, you can, it's amazing what does decompose in compost. Microbial activity uh, is very powerful because it's a biochemical reaction and creates enzymes that digest a huge range of minerals and difficult to digest products to make non vandal Plant available nutrients. Plant available. Our first light, our first measure of hard nitrogen material, which is half cow manure and half horse manure, and then we have our second measure of high nitrogen material, which is lucerne. Lucerne, being a legume, is a high nitrogen material. Of course, it also has straw-like components and hay-like components, but it's still an activator and a high nitrogen material. So now we're going to tip that on and water it in again, and add more minerals with each layer. Small amount, we're just adding a very small amount of blood and bone for a bit of diversity and because we have it. Now this is largely a store-bought mix. We got some local manures from local farmers at a few dollars a bag. Um, the bulk of this material is store-bought and this compost pile, the materials in this compost pile will be probably a total of $300 when we consider the kelp and the rock and the lucerne, which is very expensive at the moment. But we're going to make uh, at least two cubic meters of compost from this. And when we use this compost as an inoculant, making compost tea or soil probiotics, one liter of the final product of this compost is sufficient to make an inoculant uh, to apply to one hectare of land. So the value <laughs> wow. of this is exponential and really remarkable because bio, this is a bio-vital bio system rich in a, in a diversity of microbes. This compost pile will be 50% living microorganisms in high diversity. When we use, when we turn this into soil probiotic, we use what's commonly known as a compost tea brewer and we extract the microbes off the compost into a solution and grow hundreds of thousands into literally thousands of millions in a 24-hour period and then spray it on as a soil probiotic. These microbes make mutualistic relationships with your plants and help your plant health. They supply nutrient and minerals to your plants and they help build soil structure, they increase the soil's ability to accept and hold water, and have many, many other benefits helping to reconstruct degraded soil. This is a soil regeneration process. We can now use agriculture as a way to regenerate degraded soils rather than as a way to degrade soils into deserts. Um, if you look at the work of regenag.com, they have some more information. There's also some more information on amazingcarbon.com.au and of course uh, there's increasing information on the Trust Nature 
website, which is www.trustnature.com.au. So we've done a layer of carbon, a layer of green, a layer of manure. Now we're starting the second cycle being a layer of carbon. The smallest amount of compost, this will be about two and a half cubic meters. The smallest amount of compost that you can make in this system is about one and a half cubic meters. So you can make about a, a net about half this size and still make a good backyard compost. The other thing that's really good about this system is that you can continue to build it. So if you don't have all the material on the same day, you can actually build it over a month. Just keep it moist, keep the repeating going on, a bit of carbon, a bit of green, a bit of manure, a bit of carbon, a bit of green. Or if you're using your kitchen food scraps, you can just have a net, you can have a couple of bales of lucerne, you can have a few bales of straw, just mix it together and stack it up and keep it moist and cover it with a tarp. Okay, we're just adding the minerals again. We're adding calcium carbonate, we're adding some crushed bone, we're adding some bone meal that's been burned with, with rice husk. We're adding some kelp, and we're putting a mineral base in with the carbon. And we're doing that with every layer. We'll add a bit of molasses to this as well to activate the carbon layer. The microbes digest this material, they reduce it in toxicity. They, if some of them die, they're eaten by other microbes. and these, this material may be eaten by one microbe and another microbe and another microbe and another microbe hundreds of times before it actually ends up as compost, which is the final decomposition of organic products. In that decomposition process, we reach temperatures of 50, 60, 65 degrees Celsius. That's too hot to put your hand in. That's hot enough to bake a potato. So a lot of the metabolites from the organisms, the biochemical reactions that produce the heat also break down the toxins. So we have highly reduced the toxicity if there's any in the original products. So we can apply this to organic farms. Um, I love putting weeds in here. I love putting diseased plants in here because when we put weeds in here we have specialist assemblies of micronutrients. Weeds are dynamic accumulators of micronutrients. When we reach temperatures over 55 degrees for three days or four days, we actually kill the weed seeds and we kill the pathogens at the same time. And we can only do that if we maintain temperature and we can only maintain temperature of 55 to 65 degrees if we get our moisture right as we're building the pot. Microbes are responsible for making non-plant available nutrients plant available. Microbes are natural plant protectants and microbes are responsible for the pH in organic soils as well as the soil's ability to build carbon. You have to have microbes to build carbon in soil. You can't do it with chemical agriculture as we know it today. Look at the liquid carbon stream www.amazingcarbon.com.au for further information on that one. Okay, now we've had three repeats. We've had three layers of high carbon, three layers of green, three layers of hard nitrogen, manure, blood and bone, etc., molasses. And now we're going to make a capping layer. And the capping layer is going to be the same general proportions, but all mixed together. A nice, fluffy, active layer on top that's going to cap this off which will be about four to six loads of, of wheelbarrow loads of material. And that's the cap, and then make a nice round crown. And then we're gonna put a tarp on top of it. This so, is what we call the capping layer, which is a nice fluffy, nice fluffy layer with all the materials. We have a little bit of manure, a little bit of brown waste, and a little bit of green waste being the hay, the wood chips, and the, and the manures. Okay. okay, now we've capped this off. So we've done three layers of carbon, three layers of green, three layers of high nitrogen, manure, etc. Now we capped it off with straw and a bit of and a bit of manure and a bit of uh, wood chips. About three wheelbarrows full of product to make a nice fluffy cap on it so it can breathe. And then we're going to cover it with a tarp so that the car tarp steams it up and all the dry material gets nicely moist as the, car as the tarp steams it up with condensation. Um, if it dries out or if we're in dry conditions, about five minutes of misting this pile every day helps the core stay active.